It is just before sunrise on July the 2nd in the year 626 AD. Crown Prince Li Jiancheng and the Prince of Qi Li Yuanji are riding horses toward the gigantic Xianwu Gate. The gate is still quiet and dark, and the deathly silence is a harbinger of what is about to happen. An unusual group of men suddenly emerges from the mist in this unusual location. Li Jiancheng has no idea that a coup d'etat is afoot. The crown prince, like a lamb being led to the slaughter, he wonders what Li Shimin, a frequent planner of plots, is doing here at this moment. The sun is about to rise on June the 29th, 626 AD. It's an unusual day because Venus is appearing in the daytime southern sky. The ministers all notice this strange phenomenon as they exit the palace following the morning assembly. One by one, they stop to gaze at it. Crown Prince Li Jiancheng has also noticed this unusual astronomical occurrence. The appearance of Venus in the sky is an omen warning of a change in ruler. The Tang Empire was growing stronger, thus internal strife and foreign aggression were constant threats. The influence of the Prince of Qin Li Shumin was becoming a serious threat to the Crown Prince's political position at court. And meanwhile, a 100,000 strong army of Turks threatened the northern border. At this crucial juncture, an inauspicious omen appeared in the sky. All signs seem to point to impending disaster. Jinxing的在古代的这种天人管营的观念中呢，还带着军事问题。因为它出现了异常，那就可能天上有冰冠。当时它的报告呢，太史级的报告也是这么说的。For some reason, history hasn't recorded Li Jiancheng's reaction to the omen. Since becoming the crown prince, Li Jiancheng, eldest son of Li Yuan's first wife, had confined himself to administrative affairs in the palace. He was 10 years older than Li Shimin, but he seems not to have captured people's imagination as much as his illustrious younger brother had in his successful military campaigns.
，死了国本就没有了，这国家的这个希望就没有了。所以现这个时候看起来，李建成做的事情就少了。It is recorded in the New Book of Tang that Li Jiancheng was a reckless spender and irresponsible alcoholic who spent most of his time hunting. This account asserts that the first Tang crown prince was a party animal and playboy. Other historical sources report much the same. His appointment as the crown prince seems to show that his father, Emperor Gaozu, was not very competent. The combination of a decadent crown prince and a blundering emperor could spell disaster for the new Tang dynasty. Yet somehow the Tang dynasty did not die. Instead, it held on and continued to expand its territory during the eight years that Li Jiancheng was the crown prince. It seems then that historical sources may not be completely accurate. What this ardent lover of hunting women and wine was really like is still an open question. I love this thing. This is not only Li Jiancheng's love. 从他爹那时候就爱好这一套，李世民也不例外。李世民当了皇帝以后还，还还喜欢打猎，是吧？打很多大臣要要见，要上见，反对他去打猎，都跟这有关系。所以这不是他的特色。这个好女色的事情，这个可能更说不清楚。要说李世民的话呢，还能讲出很多故事来，是吧？后来他的弟弟啊，弟弟的夫人呢、啊，也都跑到他那儿去了，啊，什么什么的。但是这个李建成。到底有什么这个好色的举动？其实已经举不出证据来。In an historical record written in the early 13th century, Li Jiancheng is described as generous and open-minded. This happens to be in line with the description of Li Yuan. In other sources, in terms of governance, Li Jiancheng resembled his father more than his reckless and capricious brother. In terms of bringing order to the empire, Li Jiancheng did well in his early political career. Li Shimin. 在平定河北的过程中，不是拿下了窦建德吗？打了杀了之后，这个河北地区没有真正得到安抚，所以他的这个大军刚刚一撤走，窦建德的这个部下刘黑塔就又起兵了。刘黑塔一起兵，这个时候实际上就是两条路线就出来了。有一派的想法就是还是李世民这个想法，是说要打；那还有一派的想法其实就是李建成这一个派系，他是说呢，这些人呢，他并不是天生想要造反。只是说官逼民反，你不给他出路，你打败他之后不给他出路，他没有办法造反了，所以应该安抚。这在这样的两派这个势力的斗争的过程中呢，唐朝最终的选择是派李建成去安抚河北，所以刘黑塔的起兵后来就很快被平定下来了，而且不是一般的平定，是人心思定了。所以我我想的意思就是说呢，李建成建国。跟李世民是平分秋色的，治国这时候他跟李世民走了不同的领域。In 626 AD, Li Jiancheng was 37 years of age. Emperor Gaozu was growing old. Because of this, many state affairs were delegated to the Crown Prince in his Eastern Palace, and this left him. Little leisure time. At that time, people around the country were pleading for relief from a serious drought affecting the country. This created a huge administrative burden for Li Jiancheng to handle. However, there was also another matter that occupied his attention. Two years earlier, Li Jiancheng presented General Yang Wengan with a gift of armor 
without the Emperor's authorization. This seemingly ordinary gift led to an armed rebellion that shook the Empire. Li Jiancheng had become involved in this affair, and it nearly cost him the title of Crown Prince. In the end, there was no definite resolution, but there were many suspicions. Although there was no conclusive evidence that Li Shimin was behind the incident, it marked the beginning of open political conflict between the Crown Prince and Li Shimin. A clash seemed unavoidable. Chizone 所以太子不可以轻易的换,这是国本不可轻易动摇。Emperor Gao Zhu was now 60 years old, and at the time, this was considered an advanced age. Feeling his mortality, he began making preparations for the time after he was gone. He was, after all, well aware of the way the Sui dynasty had fallen after the change of Crown Prince, so he refused to remove Li Jiancheng after naming him as his heir. Li Jiancheng was now the powerful Crown Prince backed by his imperial father. He could easily attack Li Shimin via his father's imperial edicts, starting by getting rid of some of Li Shimin's advisors. Because actually Li Shimin, he can later have such a power, because he has a great king of the king. In the king of the king, there are five kings. These people were all killed in the war. There is also a battle that is the Gong Hong War. At the time, Li Jiancheng and Li Yuanji were trying to get out of the war. 让后宫形成针对李世民的又一个战线，这个也是一个很有力的战线，吹顶头风嘛。所以这些呢，都使得李世民觉得深受打击，后宫没有人跟他说话。The dismissal of Li Shimin's advisers and his loss of support among the harem were heavy blows against which he was powerless to defend himself. The next step for the Crown Prince was to remove Li Shimin's most crucial political asset, the army generals who were loyal to him. After serving in so many battles at Li Shimin's side, simply transferring them or buying their loyalty would obviously not be enough. Li Jiancheng needed to permanently get rid of all these military officers at one time. In the palace, it was dinner time and the lights were burning bright. Li Jiancheng planned to host a banquet for his brothers Li Shimin, the Prince of Qin, and Li Yuanji, the Prince of Qi. But this would be no ordinary banquet. First to arrive was Li Yuanji, the Prince of Qi, who lived just next door. 
Unlike Li Shimin, the younger son of Li Yuan's first wife, Li Yuanji always got along with his eldest brother and was his most reliable ally in the political struggle. Li Yuanji, always quick-tempered, seemed particularly on edge today, however. According to a palace rumor, the emperor was about to announce the appointment of Li Yuanji as Grand Marshal of the Army to lead the fight against the Turks. Liyuan Li Jiancheng actually gave his father the idea for this order. He was very happy with the outcome. It would put Li Shimin in a perilous position. Not only did Li Shimin lose his military power, but also the generals who he had nurtured through years of military campaigns. More importantly, the order had come directly from the emperor so he was powerless to counteract it. Li Jiancheng now believed that his capable younger brother was powerless. Perhaps because victory had come so easily, or maybe because of the wine, Li Yuanji suggested a bold plan to his eldest brother. Yiquiwo 你们的三兄弟们在这里 Perhaps even they, themselves, would have found it difficult to explain how they went from brothers who were very close to constantly warring political opponents. This was truly no ordinary gathering. Chi 
Personal problems and political struggle had turned the three close brothers into arch enemies. But now they were sitting together and pretended to be cheerful in what was an awkward situation. They were well aware that all their conversation would seem superfluous and insincere. And perhaps this is why there is no detailed record concerning this banquet. Li Shimin soon passed out drunk, and he had to be carried back to his residence by an attendant. Li Yuanji took the opportunity to leave as well, still feeling very pleased with himself because of his new position. When his residence was finally quiet, the Crown Prince began mulling over some crucial matters. Since the Yang Wengang incident, tensions between Li Jiancheng and Li Shiming were no longer a secret. Conflict over the right of succession has never been resolved over a few drinks. Killing Li Shiming was certainly the most direct and absolute means of resolving the matter, but it seemed unlikely that the even-tempered Li Jiancheng would consider this course of action. The following version of events is from the New Book of Tang. It tells us that the night before Li Yuanji was to receive the order to go to battle, Li Shimin's informant in Li Yuanji's residence, Wang Zhu, brought alarming news. Li Jiancheng planned to secretly have Li Shimin assassinated during the kickoff ceremony for Li Yuanji's campaign. Li Yuanji and his authority as Grand Marshal would then later find an excuse to bury alive all the military officers belonging to Li Shimin. Li Jiancheng not only wanted to kill Li Shimin, he also wanted to get rid of all the officers attached to his residence. For example, Li Chuzhenzhou, for example, Cheng 那当然,将在外军民所不受,如果是主帅想要干掉哪一个将领的话,这是易如烦恼的事情。如果他们在战场不再决定追随他的话,很可能就要被他屠杀掉了。Li Jiancheng has perhaps not surprisingly been widely condemned for this vicious plot. Many believe that it was this assassination plot that led to the Xuan Wu Gate incident. But Sima Guang's unique version of this event as recorded in Comprehensive Mirror to Aid in Government from the same period as the New Book of Tang raises some questions. Sima Guang has written a letter to the United States. He will not write it as a fact. 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 没有把他作为事实，因为司马光他有一个最基本的判断，就是认为李渊的当时并没有下决心要消灭谁或者杀死谁。所以两方面要废掉建成，他也不同意；你要杀死李世民，他也不同意，他是不会同意这件事情的。
The elements of the plot also merit review. According to the new book of Tang, Li Jiancheng planned to take out Li Shimin at the campaign kickoff ceremony, then later bury alive his military officers. But if Li Shimin were assassinated during the ceremony, it shouldn't have been necessary to deal with his military officers. The generals now under Li Yuanji will have to be present and fully armed at the ceremony. An attempt to kill Li Shimin in full view of the generals loyal to him would be very risky, successful or not. Moreover, there's another suspicious detail that can't be overlooked. Li Yuanji's suggestion is recorded in the old book of Tang. He is recorded as plotting multiple previous attacks on Li Shimin in many historical records. All of these plots seemed very plausible, but none were actually carried out. Sima Guang's explanation of this is that the soft-hearted Jian Cheng put a stop to the assassination plots. This is, in fact, one of the very few positive descriptions of Li Jiancheng's personality recorded in the historical sources. If Li Jiancheng genuinely wanted to get Li Shunin out of the way, it seems strange he would want to do it at the ceremony rather than one of the many more convenient previous opportunities. Li Jiancheng is a grandson. 他还是个哥哥，他对这个弟弟啊，肯定有恨的一面，但是还有爱的一面。这就是他始终不想对他父这个弟弟啊痛下杀手的一个缘故。李建成和李渊都有相似的问题，是吧？是兄弟啊，是
当场并没有发作，当场只不过是说有点喝酒喝多了的样子，喝醉了什么的，然后被李道宗给背回去了。呃，他的吐血多少升什么的，都是说都是他自己报告的，都是秦王府报告的，说在家里面吐了很多很多。李世民 suddenly began vomiting blood after returning from an evening of eating and drinking at the Eastern Palace. If this was indeed a case of poisoning, it would be logical to assume that Li Jiancheng was behind it, but this seems too obvious. The previous assassination plot had only the slightest chance of being carried out in secrecy. A poisoning like this would have been even harder to hide, besides which, the target didn't even die. Dong Gong is not involved. This thing is actually still a mystery. You say you want to kill him, there are many ways, including poisoning. But if you want to do it, you don't want to do it too big. 是吧？能想想要死的还做不到吗？结果呢？当场并没有发作。If Li Jiancheng had really attempted to poison his brother at his own residence but failed, his plan must have been very poorly thought out, and it certainly would have angered the emperor. It's difficult to see what the crown prince would have expected to gain from such a plot, but it is possible that somebody else was behind the poisoning. Li Wanji, the Prince of Qi, was quicker to anger than the Crown Prince. Moreover, he was responsible for many previous assassination plots against Li Shimin. If Li Shimin were poisoned, Emperor Gaozu would certainly have blamed Li Jiancheng. Li Yuanji, meanwhile, could keep his hands clean while reaping the benefits of the aftermath. This makes sense, except that the banquet was hosted by the crown prince at his residence, where Li Yuanji was a guest. That would make it difficult for him to carry it out. Moreover, failure would probably destroy the political alliance between Li Yuanji and Li Jiancheng, something Li Yuanji would never have wanted. From Li Yuanji, this angle, to compare with Tai Zi, is more expensive. Not only because the relationship is good, Tai Zi's success is more likely. The Qin Kingdom, that is the same as him, is only a Qin Kingdom. Even if he is bigger, 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 as a guest, it would have been difficult for Li Yuanji to actually carry out the plan. There may have been somebody else in Li Jiancheng's circle who wanted to see Li Shimin dead. Wei Zheng 曾经向他提过这个建议，就是这个兄弟相争啊，关键别人都不重要，就是关键就是你们俩人。如果把秦王拿下，那那个秦王府就没有，就不存在了，所以就很就很简单。Wei Zheng is a familiar figure in Tang history. After Li Shimin became Emperor Taizong, Wei Zheng became the most renowned minister in Chinese history. His relationship with Li Shimin was held up by later generations as a model for relations between ruler and minister. Yet, few remember that while Li Shimin was still Prince of Qin, Wei Zheng was an advisor to Li Jiancheng. During his period as advisor to Li Jiancheng, Wei Zheng had proposed many times that Li Jiancheng should get rid of Li Shimin and end the political struggle once and for all. Despite holding Wei Zheng in high regard, Li Jiancheng never consented to his proposals.
Wei Zhang agreed with Li Yuanji that Li Shimin needed to be eliminated. But Wei Zhang was just an advisor to the Crown Prince, so he did not act without the consent of the Crown Prince. Li Jiancheng was feeling afraid and worried until Emperor Gaozu issued a royal decree. He ordered that because the Prince of Qin couldn't handle his liquor, he was henceforth forbidden to go out drinking at night. Notice that Li Yuan's decree said nothing about Li Shimin's poisoning. It simply forbade the Crown Prince from drinking with Li Shimin because the latter couldn't handle his liquor. Li After issuing his edict to the Crown Prince, Emperor Gaozu personally went to visit Li Shimin. As the Emperor sat next to his bed, the father and son had a heart-to-heart -heart talk. <laughs> Liwuan 把这个陕西一东交给李世民管父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父皇父
，哎，看你们兄弟相争争得这么狠，这太可怕了，干脆把你们分开吧，啊，距离上分开，你在一起不就不打了吗？那那个去洛阳，这个留长安，啊，所以他就做出了一个决定，这时候是不希望儿子相争，父亲的角色占了上风。但是当东宫来说和的时候，派大臣来说的时候。你说以后可就更危险了，那就不是两个儿子相争，那成了天下相争。哎，这时候他皇帝的这个角色又又战胜了。哦，是这样，要这天下打起来，那那成千上万的人要为此牺牲啊，是吧？那就算了，别派他去了，能收回成命。就是在这里面，你就能看见父亲的角色和皇帝的角色很挣扎，这是李渊最痛苦的地方。Both the poisoning in the Eastern Palace and the Yan Wengan incident preceding it revolved around the position of Crown Prince. The direct goal of these incidents was to tarnish the image of Li Jiancheng in the eyes of the Emperor. But in the wake of these incidents, Li Jiancheng did nothing. And the only reason there were no consequences afterwards was his father's hesitancy. Suppose, however, that Li Jiancheng had been removed from his position as Crown Prince. The most likely to take his place would undoubtedly have been Li Shimi, a general with an excellent military record and victim of the poisoning attack. Li Jiancheng and his advisors must have realized this. Because there were no consequences for anyone after these two incidents, the conflict between Li Jiancheng and Li Shimin continued to escalate. Everyone could see that a final showdown was inevitable. Late at night on June the 30th, 626 AD, news came from the palace that in the morning, Emperor Gaozu would formally announce the appointment of Li Yuanji as Grand Marshal. Nobody knew how Li Shimin would react. At this crucial moment, Wei Zheng was ill. <laughs> Li Jiancheng came to Wei Zheng's residence to get advice from his trusted advisor.殿下，殿下之事虽有利于东宫，然秦王却非束手就擒之呗。所谓穷寇莫追啊。魏征跟这个太子关系还是不错，太子很很多方面也是听从魏征的主张的。但是只有这个事儿，太子没有听，那就是
Li Jiancheng had too much in common with his father, Li Yuan. Then后,这是大家对他的公认的评价 如果他没有这样的一个大前提，没有天下大乱，他弟弟建功立业这样一个大前提，让他成为一个稳定时代的君主的话，他可能成为一个好君主。但是在这样的一个动荡时代，可能血腥本身更有力量。Li Jiancheng left Weizhang to go to bed in his residence. He wondered what would happen at court in the morning. He wondered if the devious Li Shimin would willingly give up his military power. But whatever happened, Li Jiancheng was sure that Li Shimin would comply with an imperial edict. Thus, everything seemed to be going well. But in reality, Li Jiancheng's time was rapidly running out. He had no idea that he would soon commit his final act. What chance turn of events prompted Li Xiumin to carry out the Xuan Wu Gate incident? Faced with these circumstances, what would Li Xiumin do? Please join us for the next part of the Xuanwu Gate Incident.